the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. I didn't ask for it, and I have no room for it. Not, not that I'm ungrateful, but it just seemed overly extravagant and, and maybe a bit weird. Still, the sheer effort involved in such a gift really is a testament to the power of his love for me. I really, I really felt special. And on the second day of Christmas, he, uh, he sent me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. I was still reeling over the first pear tree with a partridge in it, and, and then he sends another one. <laughs> Plus two turtle doves. I mean, I know nothing about caring for birds, but, but now I have four of them in my flat, and this is when I started to wonder about him. On the third day of Christmas, he sent me three French hens, two turtle doves, and it's another fucking partridge in a pear tree. More birds? I was like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? So I invited him over and we had a talk. And he got pretty upset, which hurt me because he's my true love. But he agreed that maybe he'd gone too far and he pledged to redeem himself. His way of redeeming himself turned out to be by sending me more birds. The next day, the fourth day of Christmas, he sent me four calling birds and everything else all over again. And this is when I began to have serious doubts about our relationship. The refuse collection people won't take away whole trees, so I was chopping one to bits in my front yard when his next gift arrived. And it was the fifth day of Christmas, and he sent me five gold rings. Why five? Beats me. Plus all the stuff he'd already sent me before. I gave up chopping. It was useless. A new tree arrives each day. I was overrun with hens and doves, and they were shitting everywhere. I called his parents to say that I was worried about his mental health, and that's when I realised the root of the problem. His mother said... Isn't he the most romantic man in the world? And I was like, oh shit. The phone call didn't make a dent. At daybreak, six geese are laying, arrived by mail, wrapped in red bows. And when geese lay, they make a terrible noise akin to what I'd expect a goose being brutally murdered to sound like. I probably don't need to mention that he sent everything all over again too, but I will, just to help you imagine my personal hell during this period and the pure devastation caused to my one bedroom flat. I called him, but I only got an answer phone message that was personalised for me alone, which informed me that he couldn't answer because he was out buying tools. A vault of alarm shot through my veins. I woke the next morning to find seven swans a-swimming at my front door. Not only had he sent the swans, apparently, for them to be the perfect gift, they had to be swimming, so he dug a pond in my front yard. Backbreaking work, given that it's solid concrete. Oh, and guess what? He sent everything else again, too. <laughs> I called the police. They came over, but when I told them about the situation, they were just like, hey, nice swans, he built that pond? What a lovely gesture. And I was like, oh my God, I'm completely alone in this problem. The next morning, I'm knee deep in the pond, wrestling a full grown adult male swan when the next gift arrived. It was the eighth day of Christmas, and eight maids are milking just walk into my flat. And you know what they were milking? Cows. They each brought a cow. They say that you need to work on a relationship, but when the guy starts actually sending you people as presents, you know that it's definitely time to call it quits. They also say that love is blind. Well, in this case, love had made him blind to basic human rights protocol. I called Amnesty International. So the guys from Amnesty turn up in festive paper crowns and tinsel scarves and get along famously with the maids. And the maids insist that they aren't being made to do anything against their will, so there's no problem. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? There are cows in my flat. And the maid and the guys from Amnesty are just singing Christmas carols together. I make a deal with myself then and there to end the relationship. I was living and sleeping amongst many animals, so I was beginning to look kind of wild and stressed out. But when he arrived the next morning, he said how wonderful I looked, and that really, it was really made me feel better. He's very sweet. And then he summoned his latest gift. It was the ninth day of Christmas, and nine ladies dancing entered my flat. Nine more mouths to feed, nine more people using my bathroom. It was bedlam. I told him it was over, and he was shocked. I'll never forget it. He mumbled after everything I've done and walked away. The next morning, I'm cleaning a hell of a lot of goose feces from my carpet, yet I'm feeling really bad about ending the relationship. Then ten lords of leaping show up, claiming they are a gift of utmost love from my true love and my resolve strengthens. And these are proper lords too, dressed in high society clothing. And they're leaping about so much that the birds are going mental. And I'm like, he got lords to do this? I'd have thought they'd be too busy. I start to wonder if I'm the crazy one. And then to add to my misery over the state of my bathroom, one of the lords has diarrhea. 
on the 11th day, 11 pipers piping show up at my front door. And I'm thinking, I don't even know how he has the money or influence to make this happen. Do I even know him? What kind of a person can pull off this whole elaborate display of affection? Does his family have like crazy connections or something? It's actually, despite its startling craziness, pretty damn impressive. On the 12th day of Christmas, he sends me everything all over again. Plus 12 drummers drumming, and the noise is crazy. The drumming and incessant piping sets off the swans, which sets off the geese, etc, etc. And the whole thing is a fucking nightmare. And at this point, I've lost count of how many people and animals are in my house. It stinks to high heaven, and the swans are very aggressive and have demolished many of the French hens. I stood there at my open front door, watching the drummers join the mad carnival that was now my living room, and then out of the blue, my landlord turns up. I did the only thing I could. I ran. I moved out and left everything. And that's how I ended up here on this beach with you guys. Away from the threat of more gifts. Away from my true love. Away from Christmas. Just like you, every year, when Christmas madness comes to town, I fly to the tropics. And it feels good to be single again. A big realisation for me was the fact that I never truly knew my true love. In the whirlwind of our blossoming romance, I had been blinded by the fact that he is crazier than a French holiday. These days I'm focusing on myself. I still think of him occasionally. Every time I hear someone playing drums or if I hear a certain bird call, my heart drops and I spin around expecting a bombardment of gifts. But then I look closer and see that these are free birds. Birds on the beach. Swallows riding the warm zephyrs of the southern equator. Merry Christmas, everyone.